Colette's Corner. Hi there, this is Colette from Colette Sewing Machines Plus in Yorkton, and welcome to Colette's Corner. Today on Colette's Corner, we're going to take a panel, um, and this panel is by, um, it's called City Lights by Nina, and it's a Northcott uh, panel, and what it is, it is actually stuck together, okay? <laughs> this is actually a bag panel. So it's got everything on it, whoops, now I'm upside down. Okay, it's got, no I'm not, because it goes either way. Okay, that's the kind of day we're going to have, ladies. Okay, so um, it, uh, it's, it's an actual bag. It's made out of canvas, which is really nice, so it's got a nice weight to it. It's not just a cotton. It gives you your uh, bag piece. It gives you two straps. It gives you a little pocket that says this bag belongs to, and you can put that on the inside of your bag if you choose to, or on the outside. And then it gives you all the instructions and a picture of the bag, what the bag is going to look like when it's done. So I kind of took this a little further because I like my bags to be lined and of course this particular bag is not lined. So uh, what I did is with this collection there are the go-alongs that go with it. So I decided that I wanted to, uh, to line my bag. So what you need to do, I'm going to bring this back here again, I'm getting ahead of myself is you're just going to uh, lay your piece out and you're just going to cut exactly around the bag. You don't need to leave a seam allowance or anything like that. You just need to sew around it. And right here you'll notice that it gives you the center line of the bag and then these two little small notches on either side right there are the markings where you're going to put your little um, uh, gosset at the bottom of the bag. Okay, so you're going to cut out all of your pieces and what I chose to do, because I like my bags to have a little bit of stability, I chose to put this uh, interfacing behind it. This is an interfacing that I carry. It's 60 inches wide. And I really love to use this in bags. It gives you nice stability. It's a woven interfacing. So it just gives you that extra strength and stability in your bag. So what I did is I just pressed it onto the back side of my bag. And you can see the way this drapes in comparison to the way this does. You can see how that just completely collapses and this has some body in it. Because I like that body, I also put it on the back of my lining. Okay, And all I did for my lining is I just cut it out the same size as my bag after it was cut out. But what I did is I took just just a smidgen you can see just a smidgen off of the top because I like my lining not to bunch at the bottom so if you cut your lining just a little bit shorter and I chose a half an inch then it sits better in the bottom of your bag it doesn't all get um, really scrunched up in the bottom you'll notice sometimes when you pop your lining in your bag there's a whole bunch of lining in the bottom so by cutting it a little bit shorter it gives you where it sits really nice in the bottom okay then of course what's a bag without a pocket so then I just went searching around and I found this cute little dot. I'm a dot fan. So I decided that I'm going to make a pocket out of the dot and that pocket I'm just going to place onto my lining just a little ways down. We'll talk about uh, where it's going to be placed once we're ready to sew it on. And what I want to do here is I'm going to splice this pocket so that over here will be for your cell phone. And then this side here will be for whatever treasures you like to collect into your bag. It's always nice to have that little pocket on the inside and especially a cell phone pocket. This bag to me could be used as a grocery bag, but it is so pretty you could use it just as your regular purse if you chose to. So what I did here, instead of cutting the straps out as two separate pieces, because it's easier to interface one whole piece, I cut the straps out together as one piece, put my interfacing on the back of them, and then I cut them apart, okay? And then with the uh, bag handles, just so that you have everything prepared before you even start, what you're going to do is just fold your bag handles like this, and then just bring your sides in on either side and press them and then we're just going to fold it over like that and that's what's going to create our handles. So when you're putting your interfacings on you must already prepare these so that when you go over to the sewing machine everything is ready to go for you. What I did is my little cheat like I always do. I used Roxanne's glue basted and I'm just going to grab that. 
And because I like everything to already be together, it's so much easier to sew when you don't have any pins or anything in the way. I actually use clips rather than pins, but they still get in the way. So it's easier just to, um, just to already uh, have it already glued with the Roxanne glue based it. So what I did is I just went to my iron and I ironed in both sides. I ironed it over this way. Then I just put my dots of the Roxanne glue based it press it again with the iron, no steam, because that'll just make this disappear. And I just pressed it down, held it for a few minutes. It held, holds it into place for me. And now when I go over to my sewing machine, I just need to top stitch down either side and my handles are ready to go. So now we're gonna head over to the sewing machine. Okay, now we're back and we're at the sewing machine. So first what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create the outer shell of my, of my bag. So of course, we're going to put this right sides together. And I'm just going to use a half inch uh, seam allowance. So I'm just going to set. And then on my particular machine, I'm going to use a, a stitch length of two. You'll use whatever, you know, stitch length that you have. It might even be 2.5. On this particular one, um, I like two. So I just use the two. So I'm just going to, and you'll notice when I'm, when I'm sewing, I'm lining up my two my two pieces here and then what I like to do is I use my hand as a pin and I will actually turn my hand up like this which stops everything from pushing forward because now this is acts like a pin and then that way I sew up to my hand I stop I reposition make sure this is still lined up really good and then again I put my hand I don't know if you can see it in the camera but it's about a hand back is what I do and then I tip it up again and I sew up to my hand I stop now I'm to the end of my fabric but I'll still hold it like this with my fingers because then again it's not going to shift so then when I come up to my piece here and there we go and you'll see that it lined up Oop, that it lined up okay so just by using your hand as a pin is going to make this line up at the top. Okay. So now we're going to go over to the other side and just make sure everything is nicely smoothed out here. When I'm working on a, a bag or anything like that, I'll always back tack. When I'm quilting, I don't back tack. I just sew onto my piece and off of my piece because you don't want to put all of that extra thread there that uh, that isn't um, isn't necessary. It just makes your seam too bulky. But on something like this, you need the strength. So I definitely do back tacking on uh, a bag or anything along that line. Okay, so I'm just going to again line this up. we go okay so now that part of our bag is is done I'm just going to quickly run over to my pressing station and I'm going to press these seams open because when I'm working on a bag like this I like my seams to be pressed open if I press them to the side like that there's too much bulk there and by the time I put my lining yet on top of that and if my lining is also off to the side then you all of a sudden you have one two three four, five, six, six layers, and that's a lot in one little seam. So it's much nicer when you press them open. So I'm gonna go over to my um, ironing station, I'm gonna press these open, and then I'm gonna come back and we're going to make the bottom of our bag. Okay, so now it's time to box our corners. Remember I showed you that it showed the center line and then it showed these two little lines that were up? These are the lines that you're going to follow to do your box at, at the bottom. So um, all I do is I double check and I went over and I actually made a little, little crease in my piece here so that I can make sure that the middle of this is lined up with the middle of the bag on that side. That's the mistake that a lot of people make because if this was, you know, off to the side like that, it's going to not give you a 
nice square bottom and your bag is going to be off kilter a bit. So by making sure that that center line lines up with the fold line that you made here for the center, when you're making other bags, a lot of times, of course, there's a seam on this side and it's very easy then to match the two seams. But when you're doing one like this, you got to create a center so that then you have something to line this one up with to the back side. I usually just stick a pin through and make sure that that pin comes out where that center line is. To make this a little easier to sew a straight line, because you can't always sew, even if it's a short one, sometimes you can't. I just laid a ruler on here and lined it up with the two lines that they gave me to follow. And then I just joined those two lines because this is going to get sewn over and it's going to be on the inside of the bag and nobody's going to see it anyways. To double check and make sure that this line is good, I measured from here to here and here to here to make sure those lines were exactly in the, in the same spot. If I hadn't lined up with the middle of this one on that side, then this one would not be equal to that one. So you gotta make sure you're in the center and both of those are equal. And then I'm just going to take it over here. Again, I'm gonna back tap. And then I'm just going to go across the line that I made. And I'm just going to cut these off because we don't need all of this bulk in the bottom of the bag. So I'm actually just going to quickly grab some scissors. Love these little uh, K, K, Buckley. K Buckley scissors. They're a nice serrated edge and they cut just beautifully. You can see I don't have to put any effort in there whatsoever. So before I got on camera I had done this side as well. So this side is done. So we're just going to cut both of those off. We're not going to worry about this being a raw edge or this being a raw edge because what we're going to do is we're going to line the bag. If you don't want to line the bag and you don't want to put the interfacing in or anything like I did, you're either going to serge this edge off or if you don't own a serger, you're just going to zigzag the edge off because this is going to fray. So you want to make sure you finish the inside in some way or another. So all I'm going to do now is turn this right side out and give the bottom a good, and then just poke these corners out and there you go you have the outside of your bag ready to go okay it's a nice deep bag too which is really nice now if you wanted to go one step further and you wanted to some stability in the bottom of this bag we can go and we can put in what's called stiff stuff and then that as well is going to give the bottom of your bag a little bit of stability. So if I were to put that piece in, all I would do is just stitch a line right down the middle there as if there was a seam and that's gonna hold that into position for you all the time and it'll give your bag a little bit of a bottom. I think what I'm gonna do is actually cut myself a piece and I'm gonna put it in the bag and, um, and show you what, uh, what that looks like. Okay, now we're ready to do our pocket and our lining. So all I'm going to do is I've just turned my pocket, of course, right sides together. This piece that I cut here for my pocket is basically 16 by 13. So that's the size that I chose. You can chose whatever size you want. You can put two pockets in, you can put a zipper pocket, you can do whatever you want. But I just chose this because it was um, quick and easy and all I personally wanted in my bag was a place to slide my cell phone in and some goodies if I need, uh, if I need extra goodies in there, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave an opening so that I can turn this. So I'm just going to start, it doesn't matter where you start on your piece, just make sure you give it a a back tap and I'm going to come up to my corner here and if you have needle up and down on your machine it is so awesome because every time I stop my needle stops in my work I don't have to continue to go over and put my needle down or accidentally lift my foot up and then my work has has gone you know out of position for me so if you have needle up and down use it it's a great feature on your uh, on your machine I'm just going to flip this over and I don't need too large of an opening. I'm just going to leave a couple of inches and that means that's less for you to have to sew after, okay? And again, I'm just going to go around my piece and turn my corner here. Okay, 
so now what I like to do is I will actually go over to my pressing station now and I'm I can just finger press this as well but what I'm going to do is I'm going to press every one of these seams open because when I turn it then to be able to press everything down so that my seams are all nice and flat by putting it open first I have trained this seam here to automatically fold for me instead of having to go in and fight with it because it wants to roll this way and that way so by just going in and pressing these seams open and giving them a memory when I go and turn it then you're going to see that it's it's just going to be perfectly crisp and easy to press so that you are exactly on that line so I'm just going to run over to my pressing station and I'm going to do that okay so now I'm just pressing it back basically it's almost like you're pressing it you know, onto itself. I'm just pressing the seam open just like that and I'm going to do that all the way around my piece. And on this side here. And then I'm just going to press this open as well to now when I go and I need to um, sew my little piece together, my seam together, pardon me, that I've left open. If I just do a little opening like that, you can see it's already given it a memory as well. So I'm just going to continue and go around this entire piece. And there we go, okay? So now I have pressed each and every one of those corners. Now I'm gonna go in and you noticed I didn't cut these on an angle. Okay, so a lot of people will take that bulk out of there and they will actually cut this across. I don't do that. I leave that in and all I do when I come to my corner like this is I fold it to the side like that and then when I pop it out through, through the hole, you can see that it sits really nice with no bulk in there. Okay, I like doing that much better and it leaves your corners with more uh, strength as well. So I'm just going to pop each one of those out. And you know, I probably could have made the hole a little bigger, but we'll get it. Okay, and again, I'm just going to press that off, or turn it off to the side and pop it open. And then I'm going to do the same thing to this one right here. And it doesn't matter which direction you're putting it in as long as you're pushing it over to one side. And then we'll just draw all of this through. Come on. There we go. Okay. And now I'm just going to grab my point turner here really quick. Okay. And then I'm just going to go in to these corners and I'm just going to press it push it out to the side like that. And you can see by doing that fold that I did instead of cutting it off, there is this, the same amount of bulk in here as there is around the corner. What happens when you cut across the corner like that, you have an empty space and an empty space, and then you have all the rest of your seam here. So it, you see how much nicer that actually sits because you have the same bulk there as you do here because you didn't cut that corner off. So I really do like to leave, um, oh, now I lost my point turner. <laughs> okay, and I'm just going to go and do that around the other corners as well. And we're just going to, you see how nice and square the corner stays when you do that as well? So I'm just gonna get this one up here. There we go. Okay, now I'm going to show you here. Okay, because we put a memory in that seam, look at when I do that. Look how it automatically went exactly where it needed to go. I don't have to sit here and roll it in my fingers and fight with it because it doesn't want to go where I want it to go. So I'm just going to press this nicely like this. Okay, and I'm just going to do this all around my piece. And, um, and then I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna attach this to my lining. 
Okay, so now what I did is I just took this over to the sewing machine and I just did my top stitching across the top because I like to have a little finish on the top. Then I took Roxanne glue based it in that little opening that I made. I put a little bit of glue in there so that it just holds it into position for me until I'm ready to sew around uh, the bottom of the bag. Now what I've decided to do, because this is approximately two inches up, remember, when the marks that we had on the other bag, so I'm just going to fold that up just so that I get a good visual of where I want my pocket to sit. And I've decided that about four inches down from the top of the bag is where I want this to sit. And then I'm just going to eyeball this on either side. That looks pretty, uh, pretty straight. Um, even to me. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my trusty Roxanne glue based it. I use this stuff all the time. It just makes life so much easier. So all I'm going to do is flip my pocket back and I'm just going to put some little dots of Roxanne glue based it. You don't need a ton of it. And then I'm just going to let it fall back and I am going to use just the heat of my iron to dry that glue so that I don't have to use a pin here at all. It, uh, what I find when you, see how it's, it's down? So it's going to hold it into place for me, <coughs> excuse me, while I'm doing my sewing. What I find if I have to use pins, I find that it just rides forward and rides forward and all of a sudden your pocket is sitting crooked when you're done. If I use the Roxanne glue based it, everything is just completely in place and I don't have to worry about anything shifting at all. And it makes my top stitching much nicer when I don't have to worry about that. So again, whoops, I'm just going to... Okay, now our battery went dead, sorry about that. So we're just going to continue here. And again, all I did was just heated it here and now my pocket is ready to go. What I'm going to do at the sewing machine is I'm actually going to measure over four inches and then down six, I think is what I decided. Let me just see here. Because if I were to just leave this pocket this deep, your cell phone's gonna drop so far down in that pocket. It's nice to have your cell phone just sticking up just a little bit so that it's easy to grab. So I decided I am going to go over four and a half inches and down about six. Okay, your bigger cell phones, you might need to go over a little further, or if you don't even want this as a cell phone pocket, you can just sew down the side, you can leave it just as a big pocket, whatever you want to do, this is your pocket you choose. But for me, that's what I'm going to do. So I'm just going to mark that so that I have um, a line to follow. Another thing that I'm going to do before we head over to the sewing machine is I am going to give my um, bag at the bottom. Remember how I told you I... Uh, pressed a center line in so that I could easily do my um, uh, my boxed bottom. So all I'm going to do is just go over here and here. I'm not going to do it across the whole bottom. Now I've marked my center so that I know exactly where I need to go uh, when I make my box. I'm also just going to grab a pen. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to measure up two inches and I'm just going to make a little mark for myself because those were the marks that were on this original panel when I showed you at the beginning. So from the center to here is two inches. So I'm just going to do exactly the same thing so that I have the same markings that were on the panel originally. So I'm just going to make my marks there. So now when I go to box the bottom of this, it's going to be super easy. So I've made a crease line and I've made my two markings. So now we're gonna head over to the sewing machine. Okay, so now we're gonna go and we're gonna top stitch this pocket down. Now what I like to do as well is I don't start at the very top here. I will start here, go backwards and go forward. Because when you start up here, you have those little um, threads that you need to cut off and sometimes they leave like this weird little tail. So by starting down just a little bit, then you go backwards and you don't have those tails sticking off the edge. The tail is down here now and I can just cut this tail off and you don't have those little short ends poking out. This looks a little bit nicer. We're the only ones that can see. Oh, I ran out of thread. Okay, gotta come back. Okay, 
since I ran out of bobbin thread, you can see that I was part way in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start a few threads back and make my needle just land exactly in the line of stitching and then again I can just go forward and backwards a bit and it's just going to basically disappear into into my seam. So now I'm just going to go around the entire piece and this needle up and down that I have on my machine too allows me to creep into my corner so that I don't um, go uh, off the edge. It's so easy to just step on your foot control and then bang you're off the edge. So this makes life a lot, a lot simpler. So I just have a space that I just visually follow when I'm doing my top stitching. So whatever works for you. don't want to go too far so I'm just going to creep in now again when I come to the end and I'm going to uh, stop I'm going to back tap back a little bit so again I'm not just stopping right here on the on the edge and then doing a back tack and coming forward because I'm going to have those little ends again. So I'm just going to go back there like that, come forward just a hair, and then hit my scissors, and then you don't have those tails there. This is the one where my thread had broken, so I'm just going to cut that there, and you can see you can't even tell where I started or where I stopped. As you can see on my piece here, I marked out where I wanted my top stitching to be for my cell phone pocket. What I'm going to do though is I'm going to sew all the way off to the end so that when you put stuff in this side of the bag it doesn't disappear under there and then you'll never find your goodies again. So I'm going to go this way and then I'm going to go across this way. So again I'm going to start in on my piece go backwards and come forward. And now here I am going to start to find my line here and on this one I'm going to actually start right on my line and I'm going to just go back tap it there a bit and go across and go back and just stop right there there we go now here is our pocket ready for our cell phone and ready for our bag Okay, so we got lots of room in our pocket. So now we're going to go back and we're going to do what we did with the outer part of the bag. And I'm going to match these up. And I'm going to use my half inch uh, seam allowance. And then I'm going to do what I did before, line those up use my hand as a pin and we'll do the other side And when you're using your hand as a pin, this piece here is only going to match as well as you've cut it. So if I cut it off crooked, then I can't make these two seams match. So it's really important that whatever you're sewing, this needs to be equal up here too. You can't have made, you know, an error at the bottom because the top then is not going to match. So you have to make sure that your cutting is as good as your sewing. Okay, 
so now I'm going to run over to my pressing station. I'm going to press these seams open just like I did on the outer shell. I'm going to box my corners because you already know how to do that. And then we're going to come back and put the straps on and the lining. Okay, here's my stiff stuff. I cut it according to the bottom of my bag. If your sewing's a little bit different, if your seam's a little bigger, just measure the bottom of your bag and figure out how much is going to go down there. So all this is going to do is give it nice uh, stability on the bottom. I'm going to use this um, high-tech uh, fabric glue. I use this on all of my uh, bag making. And uh, just get that off of there. And I'm actually going to put it right inside uh, the bag and put it on this way because if I put it on my on my piece and then when I go to set it down if I get glue all over we're not going to like that at all so I'm just going to put some glue on the bottom here and you don't need a ton and then I'm just going to go in and basically pop it can you see that just yep. pop it into the corner there and then turn it this way and underneath that seam there and just pop it into the corner there and then just nicely uh, push it down with your hands and then you can see it just gives a little bit more stability in the bottom of your bag okay so now we're going to head over to the sewing machine okay now I'm going to attach my handles and all I did is I measured in from the side four inches and then placed my handle and then I just matched my one up on the backhand side. So I'm just going to stitch these handles on so that they don't move on me when I'm, uh, when I'm putting my lining in. So I'm just going to quickly stitch across these handles. I just find it easier to go from the back side because it doesn't push your handle forward. Just make sure when you place your, your handle on that you haven't uh, twisted it. So you can see this one, uh, they're both good. Just double check them because, oops, sorry, because once you get your lining in there, you don't want them twisted because then you're gonna have to take everything apart, okay? And Colette being Colette, I sewed up both sides of the bag. Didn't leave an opening to turn it. So then I just went in and I just opened uh, a space on the side of the bag so that we can turn this right side out. And then I'm just going to tuck this into the bag. Now the biggest handles are out of the way because you don't want to stitch your handles in your seam. And we'll just get that all laid. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to start at my sides here and I'm gonna make sure that these are lined up perfectly. And I'm just going to take a handful of my clips here and I'm going to clip that. And then I'm gonna go to the other side, make sure that it's lined up and add my clip. Because both of these pieces are interfaced equally, it really doesn't matter whether I sew on the outside of the bag or I sew on my lining. It's not going to make uh, any difference because they both have the same, the same stability. So I'm just going to put a couple of clips on here and you can see it's fit inside the bag, you know, really good because you, of course, um, cut these both exactly the same. So now I'm just going to go in and I'm gonna sew around the entire bag. And again, I'm just going to use that same half inch seam allowance that we've been using since we started. And again, I'm going to back tap and then I'm just going to go around my bag. Um, I'm going to use um, a style, a, use a stylus so that I can make sure that my pieces aren't moving forward. I, um, I have one that's called the Purple Thing and it's not sitting on my desk right now so I'm just going to use this one but the Purple Thing works absolutely beautifully as well. Uh, this one here I actually had one of my customers her husband actually made this for me years ago and she gave it to me as a gift it was just it's just so beautiful so i like to use it just because somebody special gave it to me so 
So this one you're not going to find anywhere. You'll find things that look similar to it, but not this specific one because this one was made, uh, was handmade. You can see it's fitting really nicely together. I'm not getting any bubbles or anything like that. So it's um, it's really good, of course, to uh, use clips to hold it into position. But then by using your stylus, you, the, the piece in between the clips so that you don't have to put dozens of clips really helps just stopping your fabric from, from shifting forward. So I really like to use, uh, use my stylus. And then when it comes to spaces like this as well, you don't want this to flip over. So it's really nice to have this to hold it, you know, into position as you, uh, as you go over top of, uh, of your seams. Really good, that's where the handle was. Make sure they're matching. And we're almost to the end here. Now I'm going to run over to my pressing station again um, because what I want to do is I want to press this open and create a memory just like we did um, on the side on the uh, pocket when we were turning it right side out actually you know what I'm just going to stay here and I am just going to finger press this because it gives a you know a really good memory as well you just want to make sure that you're giving that memory because it just makes things so much easier to turn when you've uh, when you've done that going over top of these is a little more difficult so I'm just going to go by those and just press it with my finger. You could use a point turner as well to press this uh, open, but uh, right now my fingernail is just handy, so I'm just going to just going to do that. There we go. And now I'm going to go to that hole that I made, and I'm just going to go in and grab my bag whoop oh darn it oh well we're gonna sew that closed anyways I should have went and back tacked I was thinking about it and I thought no I don't have time I'm just gonna do it so that's what happens and then I'm just going to go to the iron. Actually, you know what? I am going to head off to my iron because I want to press this really good around and then we're going to top stitch around and you'll see what the bag looks like. Okay, now I've pressed my lining to the inside. I've sewn up the hole that I used that I ripped um, on the inside of the bag and that. And I just want to show you something here. Okay, this is the non-public side of your bag and that's the public side. Okay, so what I always do when I'm doing the top of a bag like this, I will actually let the little lip up from the um, public side of the bag come to the back side of the bag because when I look at my bag like this it's all nice and clean clean finish versus trying to squeeze the two right along the top so non-public public so always do your bag to the inside to the non-public side and it just gives a much nicer look from the outside of the bag okay so now I'm just going to go around and top stitch around the top of the bag and I'm actually following the top of the not uh, the top of the public side of the bag okay I'm not going along this edge I'm going along this complete outer edge so that it looks good from the other side so it's going to look kind of strange to you from the inside as if you're not doing your top stitching correctly but from the other side it's going to look perfect Oh, didn't use my needle down. And I wasn't even thinking. I could have actually put a magnet on this bag if I wanted to because of the fact that we have a lining 
which will hide your magnet. So if you wanted to put a, mag a magnetic closure on here, you could uh, definitely do that as well. Since I made myself such a beautiful big opening on the inside of the bag, I could probably open it and put my hand inside and do that, but, but um, I'm happy with it uh, just the way it is. Make sure we have no threads hanging around. is your bag. Easy peasy. Just made from a panel. Couldn't ask for something quicker and cuter. Okay? So don't forget to um, check uh, below the video. There is going to show you, uh, it'll take you straight to my online store where you can pick up any of these fabrics. They're all posted on there. So check that out if, you'd want, if you want to make the bag. And uh, make sure you subscribe, share, and like my video. Thank you so much, and we'll see you next time on Colette's Corner.